American Legal Center, and we're very pleased to publicly kick off our uh, voter mobilization campaign, uh, Your Vote Matters, for 2012. The Asian American and Pacific Islander community is really being challenged uh, because we have the highest percentage growth of any racial or ethnic group in California in the 2010 census, uh, but now we have to live up to that in our voting. The Asian Pacific American Legal Center, which is a member of the Asian American Center for Advancing Justice, is teaming up with 13 community organizations, some of whom, which are here today, and I'll introduce them in a moment. Uh, this is one of the first times that I've recalled that nine different Asian ethnic groups are combining their efforts to get out the vote. The Asian Pacific American Legal Center has been working on get out the vote for a couple decades, but the highest percentage of Asian American voting in our history that we've recorded is 9% of the state's voters, 9%. And yet, in Los Angeles County, we are 15% or more of the population. And in California, we are also 15% or more of the population. So Asian Americans and Pacific Islanders are really growing, but we have to beat that 9%. Uh, that's not a satisfactory turnout when our population, again, is over 15%, both of the county and of the state. And the state's population, by the way, of Asian Americans and Pacific Islanders is 34% of the total population of Asian Americans and Pacific Islanders in the United States. So in the United States, there's close to 18 million Asian Americans and Pacific Islanders. California has 34% of that total. So all eyes of our community and of politicians will be focused on California because of this large Asian American population. But we have to make sure that we can mobilize our voters uh, as best that, as we can. The Legal Center, as many of you know, has been doing uh, voter research for many years. Uh, we also have a big citizenship campaign, but now your vote matters, and that's why we're launching this campaign. I'll introduce the speakers in a moment, but let me welcome some of our community organization partners who have joined us here today. Uh, Saima with the South Asian Network, please raise your hand. Thank you, Saima. Uh, Yang Ho from the Korean Re Resource Center. Yang Ho's back here. Uh, Ariel with a search to involve Filipino Americans. She's on her way. She's on her way. Uh, Florence Lin from the Asian Youth Center. Um, Chris Baimili from Empowering Pacific Islander Communities, and he'll speak for a moment. Uh, Bo from the Thai Community Development Center is here. And we also have uh, Clarissa uh, from the ACLU, who's uh, working with us on Prop 34. Uh, we are doing a nonpartisan uh, voter mobilization <coughs> campaign. That means that we are not going to be able to support any candidates or parties. However, uh, the Legal Center will be taking positions on Prop 30 and Prop 34. And uh, our community partners will also be taking positions on various uh, propositions. And all of our uh, partners will be uh, united around Prop 30. And we will have uh, a speaker on that in just a moment. So again, uh, let me introduce the speakers for today. Uh, first of all will be Tanzila Ahmed, we, we call her Taz, uh, who is the Voter Engagement Manager at the Asian Pacific American Legal Center. Next we will have Chris Vimeli, who is the Civic Engagement Coordinator for Empowering Pacific Islander Communities. Next we will have Veronica Carzales, 
the Policy and Campaign Development Director of California Calls, which we're a partner of, and then Eugene Lee, uh, who is the Asian Pacific American Legal Center's uh, Voting Rights uh, Project Director. So Eugene uh, will speak, and then we will be showing a couple of the PSAs that we produced um, at the end. Uh, let me just uh, conclude by saying, uh, before we hear from Taz, we really do count on you, especially in the Asian media, for reaching our communities. Uh, we will, as Taz will explain, we will be targeting through direct calling and direct contacts uh, 25 to 30,000 people in our communities. But we know that we could reach at least a half million or more of our community through your newspapers and your television shows. Uh, so you will be our key partner in reaching the vast numbers of people in our community. So when we do community education on Prop 30 or other propositions and spread the message that it's very important to vote, uh, we will count on your partnership to let people in our communities know. So please welcome Taz Ahmed, who will be our first speaker. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you, um, thank you for being here for this, this momentous occasion. Um, I'm really excited to announce that we're launching the Your Vote Matters campaign. This is a great project that we've spent many months working on. Um, just to give a little context and follow up with some of the things that Stuart has been saying, is the Asian American population in the nation is about 18 million. That's what we're looking at. And here in Los Angeles, we're looking at a population of about 1.4 million. Even though the Asian American voters are turning out in greater numbers in LA County than they ever have been before, the number of voters that we had in the 2008 election was about 298,000. So there's still a really large gap between people who, Asian American and Pacific Islander voters who are turning, showing up at the polls and how many are, um, what the population is in our country, or sorry, in our county. And we really want to work, create a campaign that will close that gap. So what we've done in the past when it comes to voter work is we've done um, phone calls and we've done some mailers. And in the 06 and the 08 cycle of um, the elections, we did a campaign where we reached out to about six different ethnic groups. And we did, I believe, 70,000 um, phone calls and 80,000 mailers to these, uh, to these voters. And what, what, our, what we realized from our um, efforts was that bilingual outreach and culturally competent outreach really matters for our community. Um, the phone calls that we made, usual phone calls have an effect rate of about three to four percentage points. Our phone calls in the June 2008 cycle had a 17 percentage point effect rate, and that's in your media packet and the best practices handbook. Um, that and that uh, best practices handbook shows shows the results of that election cycle. So. We're going to ramp up our efforts this election cycle, and we're going to reach out to nine different ethnic groups. We're reaching out to the Chinese community, the Korean community, the Vietnamese community, Filipinos, Pacific Islanders, South Asians, um, Thai, Khmer, and um, I believe I believe that's it. Jap Japanese, and, and that's it. So um, I think I think it's in the press, your press release as well. So one of the great things about reaching out to nine different ethnic communities is that no one else has ever done this before. We are the first organization um, that we know of that is reaching out as a nonprofit organization to educate nine different ethnic communities in very direct, culturally competent, linguistic, linguistically um, competent for these communities. So um, how are we doing this? So we um, have these posters that we have here. These posters list out um, where to register to vote, how to get educated with easy voter guides, um, where to where to go vote, how to get your vote by mail um, ballots, and um, how to how to learn where uh, where to get some more information. We also have voter hotlines that we're providing. The voter hotlines are going to be uh, in five different languages. We've been setting them up. They will be uh, live as of today, um, and we're also creating materials. Um, such as stickers. We have stickers that say, I'm Asian and I vote, I'm Vietnamese and I vote, I'm Japanese and I vote, um, for all of our targeted ethnic groups. 
We also have surveys. We really want to know what's, in, what's important for our community. So we're going around and asking our community with these surveys, asking them what are their priority issues. And from here, we'll also be able to understand um, how many have those conversations and encourage people um, to, talk, uh, to talk to their community members about Prop 30, which is a proposition that we're endorsing, which Veronica is going to talk about in a little bit. We're also really happy to announce that we'll be partnering with 13 organizations. Um, the 13 organizations we will be partnering with are the Korean Resource Center, um, Kiwa, SIPA, FASGI, CAUSE, Asian uh, Youth Center, South Asian Network, the Little Tokyo Service Center, API Equality LA, EPIC, um, which you'll hear about in a little moment, My Girls in Action, Thai CDC, and the Sikh American Legal Defense Education Fund. We're also partnering with five youth organizations. We gave out five innovative uh, mini grants to young, young organizations out there. And these youth organizations are creating videos, they're creating t-shirts, they're creating campaigns which are going to mobilize young people out to vote through very creative means. Um, finally, we're really excited to say that um, we're working with uh, the Fung Brothers, who are Asian American YouTube sensations. And they've worked with us to create a video, which we'll, you'll be launching at the end of this press, release, uh, press conference. We're also working with Channel 18 to create bilingual um, PSAs on their, on their TV shows, um, between their TV shows. So combined with our direct voter contact, which we're, uh, we're additionally we're also doing phone calls and um, bilingual phone calls and mailers. So between our direct voter contact with our um, community partners, our phone calls and our mailers, we're looking to reach out to 25,000 voters. In our media efforts, we look to reach out to more than that, about 500,000. So why does it matter? Why does reaching out to Asian American voters matter for us? For us, it matters because there are many issues that are affecting our communities. And we know that the power to vote really pulls our community to the forefront um, and makes our, vo our voices heard. And I think this election cycle is the first one that I've seen where Asian American voters are actually being paid attention to by the media. Um, and we think that's reflecting that there's a change going on in our community and um, that our, our, our voices are finally being heard and um, we, want, we want to carry that forward and make that power in numbers. So I think with that, I'm gonna pass it to Stuart and we'll be available for our questions afterwards. Thank you. Uh, we're very fortunate that Taz could join us uh, as our uh, voter engagement manager. She has over 10 years of experience in voter engagement throughout California. And so she is uh, uniquely positioned to help us reach out to our diverse communities. So thank you, Taz. And again, that challenge uh, is to increase our voting percentage beyond the 9%. And we know the population is over 15% combining Asian Americans and Pacific Islanders in LA County. So we definitely want to, uh, hello? Uh, we have uh, reporters on the phone too. So. Uh, next we have Chris Vimeli. Chris is the Civic Engagement Coordinator for Empowering Pacific Islander Communities, otherwise known as EPIC. EPIC is a very exciting organization that works mainly with young Native Hawaiian and Pacific Islanders. Uh, the organization was very involved in the uh, census count and getting an accurate census count of Pacific Islanders, which uh, increased significantly in the 2010 census. So we're happy to have them part of, of being part of our uh, Your Vote Matters 2012. So please welcome Chris Vimeli. Morning. <clears throat> First of all, uh, I'd like to say thank you, uh, Stuart and Napa, for allowing us to be here uh, to represent um, our communities, our Native and White Pacific Island communities on this big platform. Um, as Stuart said, I'm the Civic Engagement Coordinator for Empire Pacific Island communities, known as EPI. As a member of the Asian American Native and White Pacific Islander community, we face an opportune moment in our nation's history to unite and elevate our voices. 
by fulfilling our civic duty to our family, community, and our country. Over the past 10 years, the Pacific Islander community has grown by over 40%, making it one of the fastest growing populations in the country, as Stuart had stated earlier. These numbers only highlight our community's growing potential to make a difference at the ballot. While the Pacific Islander community itself is very diverse, we still find a common cause in many issues such as discrimination, immigration, language barriers, and economic justice. And we need not face these barriers alone in silence, especially when we can work together to elect officials and pass equitable laws that will support our communities and uplift the nation as a whole. One of the highest priority areas for our community is higher education. In just one of our community families, three youth were forced to drop out of college because of the ongoing financial crisis. This is devastating for our community where only 15% have obtained a bachelor's degree or higher, compared to nearly twice as much for the general population. Their dream of graduating from college will remain a dream unless we are prepared to give our youth the resources they need to finish. And that's why it's important for you to vote on November 6th on policy issues that directly affect our education and our youth. We unite behind what our community can do together. We stand with other small and invisible Asian American communities that policymakers have declared too insignificant to count. By working together, Asian American and Pacific Islander communities can make the most of our growth in numbers. We will continue to engage our community in this process, empower them with information, and let them know that your vote matters. We look forward to our community in saying, I'm Asian American, I'm Native Hawaiian Pacific Islander, and I voted on November 6th. And we will elevate our voices. Thank you, Chris. Uh, an important partner is going to be the next speaker. Veronica Corzales is the Policy and Campaign Development Director of California Calls. Uh, we're excited to announce that the Asian Pacific American Legal Center and our community partners will be endorsing Proposition 30, which if passed would bring in much needed revenues in the state's budget. We are coalition partners with California Calls, uh, the organization that has spearheaded uh, this campaign and is leading the statewide effort along with the governor to pass the initiative. Uh, Veronica, uh, again, is the policy and campaign development director for California Calls, and she'll talk more about how this initiative will affect all of our communities. Please welcome Veronica. Good morning, everyone, and thank you for inviting me to speak with you today. Uh, my name is Veronica Carrizales, and I'm with California Calls. Um, California Calls is an alliance of 32 community-based organizations working together across the state to restore the California dream. We came together because of the increasingly devastating impact of the ongoing state budget crisis and fiscal crisis on our local communities. Over the past three years, we've spoken to, over, uh, to about half a million voters statewide. What we've heard overwhelmingly from voters is that middle and working class people are struggling to make ends meet. And they're frustrated that our schools are declining and our services are being cut. We've also heard loud and clear that the wealthy who are doing well can and should afford to pay more to help solve the state's crisis. In California, we've seen about um, over 20 billion in budget cuts in the last several years. These cuts have been to education, to public safety, to health and human services, and to the state's infrastructure. And overall are destroying the public safety net that makes up California's future. Proposition 30 is the first step to investing in California's future. Many of us have come here from different places. We've come here in search of the California dream. In order for California to be the land of opportunity that it once was, we must open the pathways of opportunity 
for all by providing funding so that our schools have teachers, so that our colleges are affordable, and so that our libraries stay open, and so our neighborhoods are safe. This initiative puts the state's priority back to where it matters, our future, our families, and our neighborhoods. This is why we are all working together to pass Proposition 30 in November. Proposition 30, the Tax to Fund Education and Public Safety Act, raises six to nine billion a year in revenues for schools, colleges, and public safety. It does this by increasing income taxes on the top 2% of the wealthiest Californians. It also asks all of us to make a small sacrifice through a quarter of a cent sales tax. If Proposition 30 passes, billions of dollars will be sent this year to schools and colleges to reduce class sizes and to rehire teachers. It would also free up as much as $5.6 billion in the, in the general fund to restore cuts to health care, to child care, and to critical public safety programs. Proposition 30 will make sure that we have an educated workforce to help California's economy rebound and become strong again. If it doesn't pass, we will see devastating cuts. Approximately six billion in trigger cuts would automatically take effect. About 80% of these cuts would, be would target uh, public schools, with the remaining cuts targeting colleges and universities. Community and state colleges would see a raise in tuition fees and a reduction in enrollment making college education out of reach for many families. And we cannot allow this to happen. For this reason, a core group of organizations has been meeting and developing plans for how we can play a critical role for winning Proposition 30 and setting the stage for a longer tax and fiscal policy reforms. We are part of a larger coalition called Reclaim California's Future, a powerful and growing grassroots coalition of educators, community leaders, and residents many of whom were the original supporters of the Popular Millionaires Tax Initiative. Our goal for this election is to deliver 3 to 5 percent of the votes needed to pass Proposition 30 through a rigorous, sustained, and powerful voter education and get out the vote program. This margin of about 250,000 votes can be decisive in a race which will likely be very close. Our grassroots coalition is uniquely suited to reach and motivate voters that others may not be able to motivate. Together with allies like APOC, we have a network of hundreds of organizations and thousands of volunteers in key 25 key counties across the state. And we have built an infrastructure to make hundreds of thousands of phone calls and knock on tens of thousands of doors. We believe that if we can make the California voting electorate look more like California's population, then we can make a difference in November with Proposition 30. Having the Asian Pacific American Legal Center as part of our coalition will be critical for us to reach the Asian American, Native Hawaiian, and Pacific Islander communities in this very important election. California's budget crisis affects all of our communities. We need to work together to, cross, to pass Proposition 30. That's why teachers, people of color, clergy, young voters, low-income workers, students, immigrants, and union members representing over 60 organizations will help us deliver key groups of voters to ensure Prop 30 victory in November. Thank you. Thank you, Veronica. Uh, next up, we have Eugene Lee. He's the Asian Pacific American Legal Center's Voting uh, Rights Director. Uh, in addition to our voter mobilization efforts, the Legal Center will continue to conduct poll monitoring on election day, which we've been doing for over 15 years. And with Eugene Lee uh, being in charge for the last eight years, uh, we've really stepped up that effort. And he's going to talk about how to ensure that our communities do not experience barriers to voting. Please welcome Eugene Lee. Thank you, sir. Good morning, everyone. Uh, so as Stuart mentioned, in addition to the great voter education and engagement work that APOC is doing together with our community partners, we're also doing voter protection work. Specifically, we're conducting poll monitoring on election day. This means that we recruit and train volunteers who go inside poll sites to make sure that voters are treated fairly and that they have access to official translated election materials 
as well as access to bilingual election workers. For this upcoming November election, we're planning to send volunteers to about 100 polling places in Los Angeles County and about 60 poll sites in Orange County. In past elections, our monitors have observed polling places where translated materials were not displayed or official bilingual poll workers were missing. This doesn't happen at every polling place, but it happens enough that we conduct poll monitoring on election day to identify these issues, have election officials address them, and make sure that Asian American and other voters can fully access the right to vote. <clears throat> so why do places like LA and Orange County and other places across the country have translated official election materials and bilingual poll workers? It's because of federal law, specifically section 203 of the Voting Rights Act. In many places with high numbers of citizens who have limited English ability, section 203 requires election officials to provide bilingual voting assistance. Uh, LA County is required to provide assistance in eight Asian languages, and Orange County is required to provide assistance in three Asian languages. We, we know that this assistance is critical to the ability of Asian American voters to participate in the voting process. For example, during the November 2008 election here in LA County, about a third of Chinese American and about a third of Filipino American voters used bilingual voting assistance. Uh, about half of Vietnamese American voters in LA County and about 60% of Korean American voters use language assistance. So we know this assistance is very important uh, based on uh, voter research that our demographic research project has conducted. We need help from ethnic media to spread the word about this language assistance. This year is particularly important because LA County is required to provide assistance in three new languages, Hindi, Khmer, and Thai. And we want to make sure that voters know about this assistance. In addition to the right to language assistance, voters have another important right, which is the ability to bring someone into the voting booth to help them vote. This right is uh, guaranteed by federal law, similar to the right to language assistance. Specifically here, we're talking about Section 208 of the Voting Rights Act. Section 208 says that the voter can bring anyone into the voting booth to help them vote, except for someone from the voter's employer or union. This right is something that many voters do not know about, uh, and again, uh, ethnic media can help by spreading the word about this right. We have some resources that talk about these uh, important rights for voters, including uh, a fact sheet on Section 203, which again is about language assistance, and a fact sheet on Section 208, which is about the right of voters to bring someone into the voting group with them. We also have a, a, a handbook in your media packets. Uh, the Section 203 and the Section 208 fact sheets are not in your packet, but they are laying on the table over there, and again, they're translated in various languages. Um, and they're uh, double-sided with English on one side and the Asian language on the other side. Uh, so we invite ethnic media to help spread the word about this, uh, about these rights to, uh, that voters have. Uh, lastly, uh, we make another request to ethnic media, which is to help us recruit volunteers for our election projects. Uh, you can help uh, make your vote matter, our community votes matter, by uh, spreading the word about opportunities to volunteer for our phone banking, as well as our poll monitoring. In your packets, there's a flyer about, uh, about these opportunities. It says, become a volunteer here. Uh, with that, I'm going to uh, hand back to Stuart. Thank you, Eugene. Uh, Eugene is really right on when he says we need volunteers. We'll be uh, calling uh, at least 10,000 people directly, so we need volunteers, especially volunteers who speak different Asian languages. Uh, we also need volunteers who can go to the polling sites and make sure that the multilingual materials are available and voters are treated uh, fairly. Uh, we also will be uh, having other forums on Prop 30 and Prop 34 in the next month or so. Uh, we also will uh, be uh, doing an extensive voter poll. Uh, Danny Chinose and his team will be voting, uh, uh, tracking how Asian Americans vote throughout the state of California. It will be a very extensive poll that will be part of a national poll with the Asian American Center for Advancing Justice, uh, our larger affiliation. So uh, we will be doing a very comprehensive 
uh, strategy around voting, getting people to vote, understanding how people uh, vote, and how they voted. So it'll be uh, a really uh, fun time. And now we're going to show a couple of the PSAs that Taz and her team have uh, worked on. Taz, do you want to um, we're really excited to show these PSAs. I think we'll show the, we'll be showing the Channel 18 PSAs first. These are 30 second spots that will be, um, I believe we only have the English one right now, but they will be um, translated for the community. Your voice, your choice, your vote matters. Register to vote by October 22nd at your local library, postal office, or log on to lavote.net. Educate yourself on the issues by calling our voter hotline. Your vote matters, so vote on November 6th. So we're really excited to, be, to have had the opportunity to work with Channel 18 on creating this PSA. Um, I, I think it shows how important media is to the work that we do and how we get the word out on um, what, we're, what we do in the community. Um, the next video that we're going to show is one that was created by the Fung Brothers. The Fung Brothers are here. They're standing in the back. They'll be available afterwards for interviews. Um, and they helped create a, um, a three-minute video for us, and we're really excited to show this. It will go live on their YouTube channel today at 3 o'clock. Amma, did you vote today? <laughs> How come you don't vote? Don't get involved in politics. I have been living in the six to six for 30 years. I don't know. What does it matter? Well, I registered a vote when I got my driver's license. So after this, I'm going to go hit the poll. Wait. You keep your head down and study. When you apply for the medical school and the law school, do they ever ask you if you vote or not? What does it matter? What is one thing that will happen if you don't vote? Huh? Mom, I think I just received my acceptance letter from UCLA. Now I can finally transfer from community college and become a pharmacist with an MBA. <laughs> <laughs> Dear Andrew, we regret to inform you that due to recent budget cuts, we are not accepting any community college transfers until further notice. The ballot measure to fund the UC school system did not pass by one vote. day <laughs> Mom, you told me that if I put my head down, study hard, I'd get a good job, and then I'd be able to marry the perfect girl. Or maybe just a girl. <laughs> I can never get it ever been employed. What do people think? <laughs> Hello, SGV citizens. Or should I say, Nihi <laughs> Hao? I'm Marty McShaster, newly elected president of the 626. <laughs> they said I couldn't get elected, but I knew that Asians don't vote. So, <laughs> if you don't vote, you must cope with whoever gets elected. <laughs> so, thank you for not voting. <laughs> What's wrong, Mom? Are you okay? I thought you just said it doesn't matter. I don't know, but mommy can't have a power change. Don't you mean change of heart?
Yes. It's time to get out and vote. Let's thank uh, the Fung Brothers and uh, uh, the mother is here too. Let's, uh, thank you. <laughs> and we're very glad that you're going to vote. Uh, well, that was that was great, and so we're really trying to reach our voters through uh, traditional media, social media, and uh, every way we can uh, to encourage people to vote. It'll be very, very important and meaningful for our community as well as our county and state. So why don't we just open it up for some questions now and then I believe the, everybody who is a speaker as well as our community partners will be available for individual interviews after the press conference. Any questions? I know we couldn't possibly have answered every single uh, question, but any question? Okay, so we could do uh, individual interviews, and so please stay around. And uh, the community partners, please raise your hands again so they can also be interviewed. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.